Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our devotion again today. I get to connect with you wherever you are. And we are kind of making this transition now from uh, a theme of faith to a theme of grace. And uh, to do that, we're going to be looking at the opening verses of Romans chapter 5. But before we get there, um, just a little story uh, of how years ago, when my boys were probably eight or nine, we went to watch them play rugby. And in those days, all of the young kids played barefoot and they were literally just kind of running around the field and somewhere in the midst of them was this oblong ball which just kind of gave the game away that they were actually playing rugby. Uh, I found myself at first getting quite irritated watching them. You know, being something of a rugby lover and having watched so much uh, high level rugby in my time. And on this occasion there were just some critical aspects of the game that were missing. You know, line outs comprised just a whole bunch of kids standing in a group hoping to get the ball when it was thrown in. You know, no such thing as support for the ball carrier. It was all about each kid wanting to be a hero in front of his dad. And the kicking, of course, was a bit of a joke. Sometimes the ball even went backwards. Uh, and the kids were so slow to dive on the loose ball and gain possession. And if the ball exchanged hands more than twice along the line, it was rare. In fact, the poor kids who were in what was uh, supposed to be like the, the lion of the team uh, out to the wing. I mean, most of those kids were just hanging around while the forwards played the game. So yeah, it was a bunch of nine-year-olds who might not have considered themselves a great advertisement for rugby, uh, something uh, like our Springbok team. Sorry, I had to get that in. But they sure were an advertisement for fun and enthusiasm. Why? What made them so carefree? No fighting over pay, no threatened walkouts, no confrontations over tactics, because there weren't any. No punches thrown in the middle of the scrum, no pulling down in the lineouts, no animosity over race or anything like that. They weren't picked because they were good or because they felt they deserved to be. They were picked because they were willing. They were just happy to have made the team and to be out there on the field. And when I think of that story, the question arises, what about us? You know, we've been looking at justification by faith for a few weeks now. And today I want us to begin looking at Romans 5 that begins with a therefore. And so, as we often say, it assumes we, under we have understood what Paul has said prior to chapter 5. In other words, his arguments in chapter 4, which we have been looking at over the last couple of weeks and Paul has gone to pains to point out that we cannot be justified through our works. Uh, we don't develop a righteous righteousness and offer it to God. God develops a righteousness and gives it to us. So let's just read those words then. Therefore since we have been justified through faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So if we come back to our rugby analogy. You know, when you've been selected for the dream team, which is really what has happened when we committed our lives to Christ and became part of his team, there's some things that come with the territory. You can call it the consequences or the benefits of being selected. So in these verses, what does Paul say these are? So Paul says we have peace in verse 1. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we spend a lot of time looking at what it means to be justified. And this is a word, as John Wesley noted, that describes our relationship with God. We are declared righteous, just as if we had not sinned. 
And so the cross is like a stock exchange. You exchange your sin for his righteousness. And the effect of that exchange is peace with God. So what are we talking about when we talk about peace with God? Well, some would say it means peace of mind or a sense of security, a subjective kind of thing. But I think that's a little shallow. It's not subjective, it's objective. It doesn't depend on your feelings, it depends on your relationship. Now, if we have peace with God because of His salvation, what did we have prior to salvation? Well, what is the opposite of peace? Well, it's war. We were enemies of God. We were at war, as it were, with God. But now that war between us and God is over. Some of you may object and say, well, wait a minute, I don't see myself as being at war, or having been at war with God. I mean, I lived a, a fairly good life before. I went to church. I gave to the church. I read my Bible on occasion. I even prayed let alone some of the good things that I did to help others. How can you tell me that I was, I was at war, or even, you know, am at war with God? Well, simply because Scripture tells us that that is so. The issue is not whether you believe you're at war with God, but that God is at war with you. God is at war with the sinner because He is the enemy of sin. He is the enemy of Satan. So in Romans 1.18, Paul says, The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. You see, it's God who's at war with the ungodly and the unrighteous and those who do not know Christ. And that is what we're going to be looking at. And we're going to look at a number of verses that speak of this war and then we get to look at how grace fits into that whole picture of how we were once enemies of God and now from enemies we become friends and it is only through his grace and so join us next time as we continue looking at this wonderful theme of grace which we get to remain in for for a couple of weeks because it is such a crucial theme uh, of our Christian walk and so let's bow our heads in a word of prayer, shall we? Lord, we just thank you again for your grace. And we will be speaking of amazing grace many times through the course of these devotions. And we pray, Lord God, as we transition from justification by faith, uh, through faith, by grace, that we may understand what this grace is all about. And that we might look at these different scriptures and that they might give us insight as to what you are wanting to tell us and teach us from these verses and so bless us as we continue to uh, just learn from you lord and sit at your feet and know more about what our faith is all about thank you lord jesus bless us as we go into this day and may we continue to worship you and serve you and bring you glory in all that we do and we ask this in jesus precious name amen amen well bless you have a wonderful day and we'll catch up with you again soon